What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about this stuff. Now probably the most asked question uh, that I get on my comment section is what type of steel do I use and where do I buy it from? Quick disclaimer, I am not an expert. I am just a guy who films himself making uh, knives for YouTube and puts them on YouTube for others to hopefully learn from my mistakes. Now before I end up giving you an exact website to go to, I wanna first go over a couple of things that you should probably consider before you end up filling your shopping cart with a bunch of steel and then realize that you ended up wasting a bunch of money. Now this is 1080 high carbon steel. This is what's known as forging steel. This is not precision ground steel, meaning it doesn't come flat and it doesn't come straight. In some cases, this stuff can come pretty daggone crooked. Now, for a beginning knife maker, this really isn't that big of an issue, but as you get better, it's gonna be an issue that you're gonna have to deal with more and more, especially if you wanna start selling your knives. Personally, the matter of whether a blade is one millimeter or two millimeters out from uh, the handle of the knife to the tip of the blade, it really doesn't matter to me and it doesn't matter in the ultimate function of the blade. You're gonna get a perfectly usable knife if the blade has a slight warp in it. It's literally all cosmetics. Now the reason that I use 1080 steel is because it is the, by far, it is the easiest steel to heat treat using relatively crude methods like a mini forge or with just a regular propane torch. Now they do have other steels like 1095 and 01 that come precision ground, meaning they come perfectly flat and perfectly straight and it's basically a stock removal knife maker's dream. The problem with 1095 and 01 is that it's a little bit more tricky to heat treat. Um, it really takes a little bit more temperature control in order to get the most out of it. Now I'm not saying that you can't get a good hardened blade out of 1095 or 01 uh, if you decide to buy the precision ground stock, but you're going to get a lot more out of regular old 1080 uh, using those relatively crude heat treatment methods. Uh, you really, it's hard to screw up 1080. You basically just heat it up to non-magnetic, throw it back in the forge or back under the heat for a minute or so, uh, get it up to 1475, 1500, uh, even 1550 degrees, and then quench it in vegetable oil oil or canola oil and you're gonna get a hardened blade. I've never had a 1080 steel blade not harden. Um, they've always come out super hard and you just throw it in the oven, temper it at 400 to uh, really 500 degrees, wherever you want that hardness level to be and you've got yourself a great knife with great edge retention and it's super tough. Now again, I'm not saying that you can't get a good hardened blade out of 1095 or 01 using crude methods, uh, but it takes uh, maybe a little bit of luck and a little bit of experience to get the most out of it. So my recommendation is to stick with 1080 even though it doesn't come in precision ground form. So let's talk quickly about uh, the steel thickness. Uh, I would, like just my beginner recommendation, I would stick with eighth inch thick steel for your first knife or your first couple of knives. Now I would stay away from giant thick pieces of steel like this. This is quarter inch thick and this is a beast. This is a bear to work with unless you have power tools. Unless you have a lot of power tools because you're gonna need them with quarter inch or literally a week's worth of time to grind in one bevel. I mean, as cool as giant quarter inch thick blades look like this, they are, even with power tools, they're a bear to work with and it's really, uh, it can almost be not fun at times because they end up going through grinding discs, they end up going through belts. Um, they're just, it's just a lot more work to deal with. So you can make a lot of good knives out of eighth inch steel that will do a lot more than you think they're capable of. So now let's talk about the width of the steel. You'll notice here that the thinnest width, or this, this dimension here, that I have is an inch and a half. And I think that's probably where you should be at least an inch and a half thick. That gives you plenty of room uh, to make pretty much any blade. This, this blade here is kind of pushing the limits on inch and a half stock. This was made out of a piece of eighth inch, inch and a half stock. Uh, my, my blade's all scratched up and messed up, but it's neither here nor there. 
an inch and a half gives you plenty of wiggle room, so to speak. And also just because your blade thickness, this thickness here isn't an inch and a half, doesn't mean that you aren't gonna need that extra room for your handle, especially if your blade has any type of a sweeping curve in it or anything like that. So my advice is to at least stick with an inch and a half in width. Now I guess the next question is where the heck do I buy this stuff? Well, first off, I would do a Google search, type in 1080 forging steel and click a bunch of links on the first page and see what comes up. Look around for the best prices and what's in stock. Sometimes this stuff can be hard to find in the correct thicknesses and widths. Um, sometimes you can find this stuff, but it'll end up being a half inch thick or it'll end up being, you end up buying like a uh, giant four inch wide piece like this because they don't have inch and a half in stock. So you end up having to buy a giant plate like this. Also do some price searching and check the shipping costs before you end up purchasing because a lot of times you can buy from one place that has really cheap shipping costs but slightly more expensive steel uh, from another place that ends up having uh, lower expensive steel and then adds like a 20 or 30 dollar shipping cost on top of that. So do your price searching and uh, buy from a reputable place buy from a uh, an established website i would avoid buying things off of ebay because there are people on ebay who are selling basically mild steel as 1080 and 1095 and they're ripping people off and there's really no way to prove them on that so buy from a reputable source specifically where do i buy my steel from well i buy mine from usa knife maker i will put a link to their site down below i am not affiliated with them in any way that's just where i buy it that's just where I bought this steel from. I have bought from other places in the past. Um, another place that you can look is Texas Knife Supply. Now I believe Texas Knife Supply has um, an Amazon thing going on. So you might end up being able to use, if you have Amazon Prime, uh, getting cheaper shipping costs on some of this stuff because this stuff is not, uh, it's not cheap to ship. Now again, I'm not affiliated with either of those two websites. They have no idea who I am or that I exist or anything like that. So if you do buy from there, let them know that I sent you. Usually there's like a little comment box at the bottom of the order page where you can type in comments about your order and no one ever really knows what it's for. Tell them that Alex from Outdoor 55 on YouTube said this is where he gets a steal. That way at least they know where uh, all their orders are coming from if they get five or ten people who are ordering this stuff. Um, I think it would at least uh, maybe help keep this stuff in stock a little bit more because I have a feeling that this stuff's going to be even harder to find once this video goes out. So just keep in mind that uh, sometimes this stuff is out of stock for a long time. So this is just a basic questions and answers video about this stuff, the steel that I use, the basic dimensions, uh, kind of the overall outline of the steel in general. And I realized I didn't go, to e go into every aspect of this steel. Uh, there's a lot more to it than what I kind of put forth in this video, but hopefully it gives you a good starting point on at least where to find it. So if you found this video helpful, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you in our next video.